Hi. I'm here today to talk a little bit about the difference between microevolution and macroevolution. Now, there are a lot of people who have a big problem with the idea of macroevolution. A uh, big change, maybe one species of creature changing into another species of creature. Now, I'm just going to use this glass to stand for macroevolution. That's a lot of change. Now, I am going to also use the idea of microevolution, which a lot of people accept. Well, you know, it's kind of hard to deny that things change a little bit. We can observe that. Most people accept microevolution. Now, what I want to show is how microevolution can be an important factor. Now, suppose you have your original species, okay? And you have a little bit of change. There's your microevolution. It's a little bit of change. It's not a new species. But the thing about evolution is it takes place over time. And the more time there is, the more chance there is for a little bit of microevolution. Generations pass. More microevolution. And so on. And so on. The differences build up. Pretty soon, what you had at the beginning and what you have at the end of a time period are so different, you kind of have to call it macroevolution. It's just a lot of little changes that build up over time. So what's the difference between microevolution and macroevolution? Just time. As long as you have plenty of time, you can have a lot of change. And that's really all I wanted to demonstrate. 